Is there someone from Delaware in the house? It was so great to be with you at Delaware State University back in March for the inspired day of service. And I'm so honored to join you here today as Opportunity Nation gathers to chart a course for our path forward. Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, a conviction in things unseen. To some of you, this is familiar. To some, it's new. It's from the ancient scriptures. It's from Hebrews. And it's a reminder that those things that pull us forward are things that are often intangible. As Governor Patrick just talked about, the American dream is something that is at real risk of falling away. The American dream for the young boys and girls he talked about at Orchard Gardens is something that is at risk of turning into either a dream that vanishes in morning light or a nightmare that traps them into a world where opportunity is for other people and the American dream has left them at their bedside. I wanted to talk with you for a few minutes today, if I could, about my own experience at a middle school in Wilmington's east side, a school called Bancroft, a school where an incredibly engaged and caring and motivated principal and a terrific community-based nonprofit worked together to make possible opportunity in a nonprofit I helped found and that found its way in some small part into the shared plan today. But let me first just start by thanking you. The 250 organizations that make up Opportunity Nation touch 100 million Americans. And that's tremendous reach and a great opportunity at a time when the national conventions and the election season seems to be more of a Punch and Judy show of exchanging one-liners than a serious focus on building the future for the young Americans who most deserve our attention. I'm grateful that Opportunity Nation is there, is here with a plan with a clear vision for how to make this future possible. You've already heard today from two great leaders from the United States Senate. Senator Harkin, can we have a round of applause for Senator Tom Harkin, the chairman of the Health, Education, Labor Committee. You could hear in his comments today his passion for children of all backgrounds, but in particular, his persistent, his patient, his lifelong engagement on behalf of the disabled. And I know earlier today you heard from Senator Marco Rubio of Florida, who has joined me as a co-sponsor in the bill I hope to talk about. Yes, a round of applause, if you would, for Senator Rubio. You know, I think it's important for us to show our young people that though we might be Republican or Democrat from the heartland of Iowa or from the deep southern state of Florida, whatever our background, whatever our political calling, opportunity for young Americans is still something we feel deeply about something for which we're passionate, something for which we're willing to cross a partisan divide. As the son and grandson of classroom teachers myself, as someone who has seen the transformative power of education and experienced it in my family and in my community, um, I was excited to be able to introduce in the United States Senate an idea that was built out of a personal passion. I can also talk about it in the abstract terms that if we want to be a successful and competitive economy, if we want to continue to grow our nation and we want to continue to fix our deficit and if we want to compete on a global scale, we have to have a country where your future isn't determined by your zip code, where income inequality isn't marred by complete lack of social mobility. But that's the up here stuff. The in here stuff for me came from Bancroft Middle School. Long before I entered elected service, when I was a much younger man, I helped start a nonprofit in Delaware called the I Have a Dream Foundation. And what I saw in more than a dozen years of active work with 50 young people from the east side, from Bancroft Middle School, changed these abstract statistics into faces, into names, into families, into paths. Instead of thinking about the tragedy that America used to have the number one, we were number one in the world in college graduates, and today we're number one in college dropouts. We're number one in kids who start college but leave with crushing debt. Those are abstract statistics. Instead of thinking about the important but also abstract statistic about only one in 10 
young people of the background that was typical in Bancroft Middle School having any hope of college and instead focusing on the constellation of young people who actually finished college through our work together. They moved in my heart, in my family, in my life from abstract numbers to real people. Kizzy and Turan, Zelly, Ian and David, 50 young people whose lives are intensely interwoven into my own and whose stories haunt me and challenge me and inspire me, even to this day. The bill that I introduced is called the American Dream Accounts, and it's at the core of an idea that's here in the shared plan, an idea that, to put it in the abstract in policy speak, says we need to initiate college planning support for low-income students paired with asset development. That didn't get a round of applause because it's a little obscure. So let me take a minute, if I can, and put some meat on those bones. What does initiate college planning support for low-income students paired with asset development mean? It means having faith in the assurance of things hoped for, a conviction of things unseen. Every young person at Bancroft Elementary who stays the course works their way through school, and is interested in college, is eligible for something called a Pell Grant. They've never met Senator Pell. They don't know who he is. They aren't even aware of this existence. In the state of Delaware, we have seed grants and discover grants that make it possible to go to Delaware Technical and Community College, Delaware State University, University of Delaware. Yet young people at 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 have never heard of these things. They're abstract. They're out in the ether somewhere. The idea here first is to make them real. Studies show that any young person who knows from an early age that there is an individual college savings account in their name is seven times more likely to go to college. For folks who've known this from childhood, this is common sense. For folks who haven't experienced this, it's hard to understand that when you grow up in a classroom, a community, a family, an environment where you being able to afford college doesn't begin being mentioned or discussed until you're in high school, it's just often too late. So one of the great insights of the I Have a Dream program was to break into that and to make a credible personal promise of a college tuition scholarship, not in seventh grade, not in 10th grade, not when you're applying for college as a senior, but early in elementary school. Why? <laughs> to change the game, to change the trajectory, to lift the eyes and to hold up a mirror to young people from their earliest ages that says, this is who you can be. This is who you will be. You dream of. Have you ever stood before a group of kids in an elementary school and asked, what's your dream? What do you hope to be? You get the same answers, regardless of the zip code or the background, the income level, or the type of school you're standing in front of. Young people in elementary school shout out the same things, regardless of where they're from. They don't dream of dramatically different outcomes. They dream of the same things. And college, higher education, finishing high school is an essential part for all of them, except professional basketball stars. As someone who never dreamed of being a professional basketball star, for painfully obvious reasons, I think I could connect with young people who needed that extra faith and that extra encouragement from the very beginning. So that's one element of the American Dream Accounts bill that I've introduced and Senator Rubio has co-sponsored, and that's at the core of this asset development plan referred to in the shared plan. What's next? Now you understand. The reality is every state in the United States has an existing program, flexible, individualized, secure college savings accounts, 529 plans. But very, very few of the working class families, of the people who are most in need of this help, are aware of them or use them. And in states like Delaware that have not just Pell Grants available, but state grants available, that really make a Dell Tech education, a Dell State education entirely accessible, we don't tell young people until it's too late. So first, imagine that you, in elementary school, hear about this year in and year out. Second, 
One of the biggest challenges we faced with our 50 young people was movement. They moved all the time. They all started at Bancroft, but they ended up at 14 different high schools. And the path they took from elementary school to middle school to high school was very unpredictable. And so many of them lost the progress they'd made as they moved from school to school, where teachers who were trying their hardest and working their heart out had classrooms of 25 or 30 students. And in the middle of the year, they'd get a new student in the back. And what information would they get? They wouldn't know this new student. Just because Turan showed up in the middle of the school year from another school didn't mean he came with this whole full folder that helped the teacher connect with and understand this new student. And that was one of our biggest contributions, was going and visiting the new school, connecting the parents to the new school, connecting the student to the new school, connecting the mentor who'd been with him at Bancroft to Gogger their new school. But that's so labor intensive and so demanding and difficult that when we've met with folks over the years, people from I Have a Dream Foundation, we've heard over and over from the US Department of Education to the Ford Foundation, that's just too expensive. How could you scale that to touch whole schools or whole districts or the millions of young people who drop out who we need to touch? Well, one thing has changed profoundly since my years working the east side of Wilmington and then nationally with I Have a Dream across the country as our dozens of classes around the country played out. That's these things. Individualized student college savings accounts that match up with an individualized dream book that says, what did you dream of doing? How did you do in your class? Who were your teachers? Is possible. Imagine a Facebook for college and for life. States like Delaware have already invested in these systems. There is a complete career and college awareness computerized system in Delaware. Individually tracked, secure and private, yet it doesn't connect in any way to the college savings plan. It doesn't connect in any way to your experience in the classroom, to teachers' reflections, to mentoring, and to parents. These are all in silos. And on top of that, once a young person drops out, should they drop out of high school, we then spend billions more in federal dollars on a completely separate job training program. So if you're in Job Corps after several years off from high school, it's as if you've never been in school before, even though the school you dropped out of might be four blocks away. These silos in the American publicly funded education, training, and college access system need to be broken down. And so what I bring to you to share today is just a simple and powerful idea, one that's been tried, one that's been demonstrated. You might want to look, for example, at how the whole city of Syracuse, in partnership with a foundation called Say Yes to Education, has made a community pledge to its young people of college access, of mentoring and tutoring support, of high school completion, and of follow-through support into higher education. You might want to look at a bill that Chaka Fatah in the House from Philadelphia and I have co-sponsored that helps encourage these sorts of wraparound community college support foundations. You might want to look at the Harlem Children's Zone and what an impact that's been able to make on high school completion and on college attendance. There are a dozen more times and places where folks have taken a stab at these ideas. And Secretary Arne Duncan, the United States Secretary of Education, who himself got his start in education helping run an I Have a Dream program on the south side of Chicago, has put into this year's Gear Up program a $9 million, a $9 million demonstration project for individualized college savings accounts that will touch 10,000 young people and help them lift their sights towards the possibility of college. Let me just say, if I can, in conclusion, that these ideas need your help to make them more specific, to make them more powerful, to make them have lift, to make them have life. In the end, what I hope comes out of this American Dream Accounts Act is a federally funded demonstration program, a platform, a way to facilitate connecting across all these different silos from early childhood to middle and elementary school to high school to college awareness to career awareness to college savings to college completion. But that's the up here about it. In the end, as you know more than anything else, the in here about it is to change 
the sad, the grinding, the difficult reality today of an enormous achievement gap in our country, of painful statistics that suggest that whether you're likely to go to college or finish college can be predicted by the zip code in which you live. That should not be our country going forward. And with your hope, your faith, and your investment of time and energy and belief in this shared plan and in the values that it embodies, we can and should be able to make bold ideas like this possible and to be able to change the future for millions of young Americans from one where they can simply dream of going to a great college, something they see on TV or hear about from distant relatives or friends, to something that's a part of their life from their earliest days, something on which they can bank, something on which they can plan, something on which they can build, a life of opportunity, of engagement, of service, and of hope. Thank you for your interest, and thank you for what you're doing to make America an opportunity nation.